Hi everyone, this is Judy from Happy Holistics and this video is all about improving your digestion. So you may have heard of the expression, you are what you eat, but I actually disagree. I believe that you are what you digest. So for example, you can eat all the salad and you can eat all the brown rice and broccoli as much as you want, but if you're seeing large flecks of uneaten broccoli or full grains of rice in your stool, that's a sign that you're not digesting properly. Tip number one is to chew your food thoroughly. I would say about 30 chews for every bite. It may seem excessive, but digestion actually starts in your mouth. The purpose of saliva is to start breaking down the carbohydrates, but that's obviously not gonna happen if you're not chewing your food. So I would say that a general rule of thumb is that before you swallow, make sure your food has turned into paste first. Tip number two, which kind of goes in with tip number one, is to actually take your time and slowly eat. Each meal should last about one hour long. Now it might sound airy-fairy like I'm pulling this information out of my holistic hippie ass, but the truth is that this is related to how your parasympathetic nervous system works as well as how your sympathetic nervous system works. The parasympathetic nervous system predominates when we're relaxed and calm. So it slows our breath, it makes sure that our heart rates are calm, it lowers blood pressure, and it makes sure that our digestive system is running. The sympathetic nervous system does the opposite and actually prepares us for emergencies. For example, it dilates our pupils so that we can see clear, it pumps up our adrenals to get us ready for action or exertion, it speeds up our breath so that we get oxygen throughout the body. But get this, it also stops your digestion. It knows that its number one priority is to get you to safety, so it activates all of these reactions that will help keep you alive in an emergency situation. On the other hand, it'll stop digestion because its number one priority now is to get you to safety rather than to digest that burrito that you had at lunch. Eating when we're stressed or rushed or anxious or nervous, that is activating our sympathetic nervous system which means that digestion isn't running. Tip number three is to choose real whole foods at least 80% of the time and make sure that some of that is raw. So raw foods are excellent for you because they do contain a lot of natural enzymes which will help digest food as well as happy bacteria and happy yeast. Whole foods are recommended because nutrients work synergistically. This means that they work better as a team for example, in real whole foods, rather than isolated vitamins and minerals that you see in supplements. So for example, you might have heard that calcium absorption is improved with the presence of vitamin D. Number four is to consume fermented foods on a regular basis. We're talking about things like kimchi, miso, kefir, sauerkraut, and stuff like pickles. These have two actions in your body. One of them is that the happy bacteria in these fermented foods help to pre-digest these foods before you consume them, making digestion easier. The second reason why they're so awesome is that some of them actually survive through your hydrochloric acid and they populate your gut. So in your gut, they'll help you digest food that you'll have in the future. Consume prebiotic foods in raw form. For example, dandelion greens, burdock root, and sunchoke. Prebiotics are technically not digested by the human body, however they do act as food for your probiotics. So if you keep your probiotics or happy bacteria happy, then your digestion will improve. Tip number six is to eat raw pineapple and raw papaya in order to benefit from their digestive enzymes, bromelain for pineapple and papain for papaya. Don't drink too much water before and during meals. What this does is that if you drink a lot of water during a meal, it'll actually dilute your stomach acid. So the breakdown of proteins is a little bit more difficult. If you must have liquids during a meal, go for something like a nourishing broth or some soup and do it in sips. Number eight is to eat simple meals. So for example, for dinner, you might have one grain and one vegetable. So what happens when we eat is that our body needs to produce different types of enzymes, even to digest two different grains. So for example, if you're having a meal full of 15 different types of vegetables, plus a grain, plus a protein, that's gonna be a lot of different enzymes that your body will have to make, and it can get overwhelming. 
Number nine is to rotate your foods and make sure that you're not having the same thing every single day. What happens when we eat the same thing is that we deplete our body of the enzymes that break down that food. So for example, let's say you have cream with coffee in the morning, then you go for a yogurt snack and you have a sandwich with cheddar cheese for lunch, then some ice cream and some pasta with some Parmesan, and then right before bed you have a tall glass of milk. That is a lot of dairy. If say your body wasn't finished digesting the food from breakfast or from your snack, it's gonna eventually lead to buildup of undigested or partially digested protein structures. So they end up squeezing themselves through the intestinal wall, leading to increased intestinal permeability, in other words, a damaged intestinal wall, and it'll head towards the bloodstream. Once it gets to the bloodstream, your immune system won't recognize them because they're partially digested or undigested proteins, and they're gonna choose to attack, which means that your body is gonna be in an inflamed state. And this will cause food sensitivities or food allergies and food intolerances. That's all for this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already but enjoy learning about nutrition, yoga, health, and wellness, please subscribe so you're notified with each new video.